Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Carrots and Cosmos. I think I might have the dreaded blight and I try and keep the ants away as well. But first, let's go over to Jem. Jem, are you winning? Hmm, I don't know. Let's go find out, see what I've been up to. A month or two or so, in fact the uh, the 20th of April, um, I planted out one of these little seed pod things. I don't know if you remember, some of you might not have seen it. Um, but basically that's the, the courgette one. And it comes in this little peat pot like that and you just put it into compost uh, it says on it guaranteed to grow and this is the sweet pepper and it has grown there were two came up so um i pinched out the is that the right phrase i put pinched out pulled out <laughs> the smaller one and it's doing quite well i think for me so um i might pop that in the allotment today um also cucumber update are you ready for this this is one of my um <clears throat> biggest achievements to date yay look at this it's got a tendril on it so i think there's a flower coming jazz i don't know how yours is doing i've got no idea because this is of course um from the the cucumber challenge jazz and i are doing as you can see, I've put strolch around it. Um, I, I know that's not going to help it in any way, but it's it's been outside a little bit. Um, trying to get some sunshine because, and I've got so many snails and slugs. I've put this uh, strolch down because that's meant to be a little bit of a snail and slug repellent. And so far, it's survived. These little... Um, spiky bits on the stem is that normal i've never grown cucumbers before is that okay i know you're not supposed to get the stems wet so i've been I'm putting water down there i should probably do that again in a minute and um, i've been drinking from below but um yeah i'm pretty pleased with that hello so these are all the um things i'm going to plant out today got some marigolds that student gave me um what else have i got Pumpkin, which looks like it's been attacked already, look. There should be a leaf there. Um, some squashes, I grew this squash, have a look. Have a look. I grew this one. I've got my writing on it. So, I'm gonna go to the allotment. I haven't been for uh, quite some time. So I'm going to do a little update, maybe plant some stuff out, maybe sow some seeds, it's been a while, um, to check how everything's getting on. So let's go and have a look. I hope there's not too much work to do, I think there will be. But I've got some time today, so that's good. Let's go. It's my uh, bean aisle. I was going to do it all full of beans and peas, but I've decided to do pumpkin and squash down this end. So we've got these two for now. The other day I planted some snap peas, sowed some beans down, just seeing if any have sprouted in three days, but I can't even tell because of the weeds, to be honest. But we managed to weirdly survive. Uh, and my runner beans are doing okay, I think. This is not my allotment, but um, look at these uh, parsnip seed heads. You thinking what I'm thinking? Yep, they look lovely in a flower display. Raspberries are coming along. Quite bushy now. Here are my sweet peas. You can see them just about. Quite good and healthy and strong. I had my worries about them, but I'm quite optimistic now. 
it's only about a um, foot and a half off the, off the floor. <laughs> Hopefully they'll grow and flower some more, but that's, that's great news, that's progress. We have a, an artichoke that my neighbour gave me and uh, some kind of brassica that's been eaten. <laughs> to be fair, I put it in, it looked like it was dead within a day and it's uh, perked up quite a lot. I even forgot I had these. I, need to, I think that's a gourd. I should plant that out, huh? This is what's happened to my asparagus now. When you leave it, it looks like a bit of a forest. It should turn into some nice foliage though. Asparagus fur. Pay good money for that. The cosmos are doing well and anemones are coming out, so I might pick some of those today. My amaranthus, of course, and my syrinth. Syrinth are ready to pick. Some of those. Let's pick my fir first cornflower, and it's a pink one. Check out that colour, it's gorgeous. That's about my one and only one, I think. Oh, there's another one just behind it there. Out of all those that I planted. I like it though. That's a great colour. But this is the, the grasses and the wild flowers, in inverted commas, bit that I sowed. And I think we can safely say that I just grew some weeds there. There might be like a nigella up the end, I think. The perennial garden doesn't look great. Got this little fella here. He's cute. This is my raised bed where I planted loads of seeds and nothing really happened, so I planted some bigger plants, but I've got some mimosas coming up there, I think. Either the potatoes have blight or they're ready. They should be ready, they're Aaron Pilots, first early, so I'm going to dig some of those up tomorrow. They never flowered, but these ones, the Charlottes, are flowering. They're second early. There's my sar sarpo mirrors in the bucket there, looking good. Um, I planted some more seeds down here the other day. I've only had about four radishes so far from anything that I've planted. But my onions are looking good. Look at those. So quite pleased. And chives. Yeah, it's not looking too bad. There we go. You just need to plant a little more. This is my nine bark bush, or Physocarpus, I think is the English. Nine bark is the American way. My nine bark. Nine bark. Anyway, uh, I'm supposed to not cut it for at least a year, so um, I'm doing the best I can not to. And that's my smoke bush. I think. I can't remember what that's called. A beautiful, beautiful fox clap. Look at the colours. And this one. It's kind of pinky apricot. I don't know if you can tell on, on here. Behind here somewhere I have some gourds. Oh, look at that flower and the gourd. Oh, gourd. So, you've seen what I've been up to. Now it's over to Jazz to see what she's been doing. Thanks Jim. Now to the garden. Lilac trees in full flower. Looks beautiful, even on a dull day like this. Hmm, I wonder. So this is the Julie Drake Sarpo Mira and I think it's got signs of blight which I think doesn't affect this potato, but maybe the other ones. So I've moved it away and I'm going to cut any dodgy looking leaves off and hope that 
um, solves the problem and then throw all the affected leaves away. There we go. So that's after the Julie Drake Sarpa mirror has been trimmed a little bit to get rid of the infected leaves. So fingers crossed that's enough foliage on it. There we go. We haven't been out doing any gardening for about three weeks now and everything's gone a bit crazy. These are the potatoes. They're all, uh, they're doing really well, but um, we have had some problem with something that we weren't sure whether it was blight or not. I'll come in on this one. These little dots on here, These. this is the start of what is happening to some of our potatoes. The first one to get this was the Julie Drake. So if you know what this is and if it is blight, let us know. I've noticed this on um, one of the Orla potatoes. Does that look a bit more like blight? We'll get them off. We'll cut those leaves off right now. Here's the garlic. That's it's growing really tall now. Um, I don't know if anything's happening with it, whether it's bulbing up or not. But I have noticed a little bit of rust. Here's a little bit of rust on there. There's a few other little splotches of it, so I think we might just uh, get those bits off and hope that we catch it. And this is the pitiful bean bed. Uh, most of the ones that I sowed direct um, to make up for the fact that all of the ones that we sowed before um, the germination was very very poor and some of them got eaten by slugs and so these new ones that I've sown they've also had the leaves nibbled off by slugs so we'll either have to buy some new beans in or plant sow something else in there completely the monge too that I sowed though, they're starting to come through and they're looking good. Some of them are actually quite big now, so hopefully that they'll save the day a little bit in this bean bed. Here's the broad beans. They're really growing quite tall now and we've been lucky. We haven't really got a problem with any black fly. I haven't seen any. I've seen a few ants on there, but I haven't seen any blank black fly in the tops. But we might just take the tops off now because they are quite tall and just to prevent future black fly. No sign of any beans yet though. Poor old sweet corn there and the root trainers. Everything just needs to go out. Should have been out weeks ago but we haven't been ready. This brassica bed now needs completely clearing out. It's, uh, it's pretty much over now apart from those little spring cabbages down here which are being decimated by slugs. Got a massive infestation of these grey aphidy things all over these, um, well, brassicas. So we're going to get all of these out and put them in the brown bin. We interrupt this broadcast for a new single from Beetle for us.
So at the moment I'm pretending the vegetable part doesn't exist and I'm just looking at this lovely wild bit here. The bees are loving this bit and it's kind of like the positive thing in the garden at the moment. So this is where neglecting your plants gets you. <laughs> This is uh, my carrots, looking a little bit worse for wear. Um, I don't know if it's really worth putting them out, but um, I think it's a bit too late to sow some more now. Um, got a nice um, case of leaf miner, I think this is some kind of leaf miner, which is uh, causing lots of pretty patterns on the leaves, but um, probably not very good for the plants. This one's kind of the finished Almost finished colouring that one in. Here's the chilies. They're still really small because they've been in these tiny little pots for too long. So I'll have to get them into some, well, into their final places really. And so we've got a mammoth, mammoth task to get everything outside after not doing anything for probably one of the most important times of the year. <laughs> got to get all these out as well. We are yet to fill these two beds. We've got to put um, the tomatoes and the chilies in here, this little plastic greenhouse, and we'll probably put the cucumbers up there. That's the plan at the moment, anyway. We've put the mesh cover on this now, taking the plastic one off. This is the roots bed. <clears throat> and there we've got the leeks. We were going to have some carrots in there but we haven't got around to putting them out and now it might be too late. There's a few carrots coming up from the ones that we sowed. You can't really see through this mesh can you? Some parsnips and then some onions as well. And now look at the brassica bed. Looks very bare now. We've taken all of the broccoli and what not out of there. So we're going to be planting other things in there, we're not quite sure what yet. I guess it'll just be an overspill bed for now. But we're going to plan it all better next year. So this is one of the beds uh, we're going to fill today. And uh, we're going to put some sweet corn in this one. On a closer inspection it seems like there's an ant's nest in this bed as well. Um, you can see like some of the little runways and things that they've made. Little chambers. So it's kettle time again. When I was needing some advice about the slugs, um, Jim Rafferty it said to use some um, bicarbonate of soda or baking powder um, and icing sugar and mix them together. Um, so I've mixed them in this little bowl here and then put some in these little um, they're old mackerel fillet tins and I've just put some of that in there and um, let's see if that helps I've done this one plain, I've also done a version where I've added water to this as well to see if that makes any difference so let's put these out in the garden Also put some around in these little plastic pots. I'll put them on the side so the ants can easily get in and out. And I've even put one in the compost bin because there is loads of ants in here. I'm starting to get some flowers on the potatoes so that's encouraging. Hopefully something's going on underneath as well as on top. I'm not sure if this is blight now spreading onto my tomatoes. Um, 
Is this blood or is this something else? Okay, that's it for now. Please click on the thumbs up icon below if you like this video and uh, press the red subscribe button if you'd like to be informed of our future videos and keep up to date with what we're up to. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.